Hi guys, it's Sandeep from Phone Arena and this is the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium and it is indeed premium as it is the world's first smartphone to pack a 4K display. That means it has a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels and that is insanely sharp. We are not sure whether it's needed or not on a smartphone and that's a matter of debate. But what we can tell you is that we have never seen a display quite as sharp as this one on any other smartphone or gadget till date. So let's just take a look at the hardware aspects of the device first. So up front you have a large 5.5 inch display with 4K resolution. Above the display you have the 5 megapixel front facing camera. You have the Sony branding here as well as the ambient light and proximity sensors. You have the earpiece and below the display you have the stereo speaker here. Also the secondary, I mean the primary microphone is housed here. Now moving over to the right, you will see the usual set of controls that are there on any Sony device but with a bit of difference. Over here is the camera shutter button and the volume rocker button has been moved from here to down here. And the power slash lock key is actually now much bigger if you can see it and there is a reason for that. Now the power button also houses a fingerprint sensor built into it and it still clicks as well. And now moving over to the left side of the device, here you have the slot for the nano SIM as well as micro SD card slot. And you actually have to open it in order to access the bay. You also have a nice Xperia branding here, which is actually embossed into the device's edge. Now moving over to the bottom, here you have the micro USB port along with a lanyard eyelet and the cutouts for the antenna. And at the top, you have the secondary microphone and the 3.5mm audio jack. Now moving over to the back, here you can see that the device actually has a newer 23 megapixel sensor which is different from the 20.7 megapixel sensor that you got in the Z3, Z3 Plus and Z4 etc. And this sensor is 1 by 2.3 inch in size and it also comes with a maximum aperture of f2.0. Now Sony says that this is much better in low light and also is much faster to focus as compared to the previous gen smartphones and they say that the autofocus is faster than any other smartphone out, out there. So that is something that we'll be looking forward to testing but right now that is the specification of the device. So let's just take a look at the software aspects of the device now. So let's head into settings and see what software version it actually is running. So as you can see here the device is running on Android version 5.1.1 and the model number is E6853. Now the device is powered by a Snapdragon 810 processor and it's actually quite cool in terms of performance. We never really had any issues with lag or overheating even with the 4K display. But perhaps gaming or benchmarks might actually cause the processor to overheat a bit. So that is something we look forward to trying. And now let's go into a storage. So this is the 32 GB variant and out of 32 GB of space, the user gets around 18.78 GB out of the box, which is not a lot, but it should be good enough for most people. And the device also has a micro SD card slot that supports cards up to 200 GB, which is a good thing. Now let us show you the fingerprint sensor. So we'll head into security and here you have the fingerprint manager. So here, as you can see it, I'll just tone down the brightness a bit. See, this is the setup. So first, click get started and you have to set a pin or password in order to proceed. So let's just set up a password. All right, so next. So here, this is where we have to put our finger. So all you have to do is just place your finger there and it starts detecting your fingerprint. And that's done, so the fingerprint is registered. So let's just try locking the device. So here, as you can see, we have used, we have enabled the unlock device for, with fingerprint. So let's just lock it. And now we'll try to unlock it by swiping. So it asks for a password. So rather than entering a password, I'm just gonna place my finger here. And as you can see, the device gets unlocked. Now you do actually have to wake up the device by pressing the power button, but even then, you just tap it and the device does get unlocked. Now we quite like the integration on the power button even though it's on the side because your thumb naturally goes to that position. We find it's much better than the positioning of the fingerprint sensor at the back of the phone but maybe not as elegant as the one on the home button on the front. But even then it's something that you can really get used to. So let's go ahead and take a look at the camera UI now. So as you can see here, here's the camera application all booted up. 
let us just go into a settings and see the maximum resolution. So, as you can see a 4 is to 3 ratio 23 megapixel that is the maximum resolution that you can choose for photos on this device. You can also choose a 20 megapixel mode with 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. So, over here on the right side we have the gallery shortcut button, uh, over here you have the camera shutter button, you also have the quick toggle between the video recording as well as photo modes and you have the mode switch. So, over here you can choose between different camera apps, there is manual mode, there is a 4K video mode, sweep panorama etc. Now, coming over here you have the quick toggle for the HDR, you have the white balance as well as exposure compensation dial, you have the flash settings, you have the quick camera toggle between the front and rear cameras and over here you have various other settings self timer, smile shutter, focus mode, ISO metering, there is an image stabilizer. Again you have geotagging, you can choose where to turn the sound on or off. You can also have grid lines in case you want the camera to help you assisting in composing a shot. In terms of video, as you can see here, full HD 30 FPS, full HD 60 FPS and if you want to record 4K video you have to go into the 4K video app and it does narrow the view uh, quite a bit. The focal length seems to have reduced but then you can actually record 4K video. There is a standard steady shot which actually is image stabilization and makes it quite good as you can see in the sample that we have included. And you can choose to have sound on or off and that is about it, even the microphone on or off. You can even choose between formats H.264 or H.265, that is up to you. So with the bump up in resolution, Sony has also managed to fit in a larger battery into the device. So the device has a 3430mAh battery under the hood and while we aren't sure whether that's good enough to power a 4K screen, we expect Sony to actually do some good optimization and give the user a decent amount of battery life. Since the past phones have been very good such as the Z3, Z2 and the Z3 Plus have all given heavy users a comfortable day of usage. And in case the battery does run out, you can be sure that you can charge your phone quite fast thanks to the Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 technology built into the device. So to sum up, the device has a Snapdragon 810 processor, it has 3 GB of RAM, it has Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0. So that was the hands-on with the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium. If you liked the video, do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.